folks, I got another one for you. I'm working on my Gatsby website here and I've got this nav, which looks great when it's like super wide screen, but when you start to get a little bit smaller, um, I want to wrap these items around to a second line on a nav and I want to style the items that are in the second row a little bit differently. So I've previously asked about this and, and I've written some JavaScript um, where I'm like, well, I want to like style rows differently. Like what if you have CSS grid and you want to tiger stripe the columns and you want to, you want to do it a little bit differently. Right. And I think, uh, nth row West boss, if you search that there should be a GitHub issue. Here we go. I asked Rachel Andrew, like, is this ever going to be a thing? Um, in CSS grid. And they said like, um, maybe, um, that would be cool. Um, but I did a couple examples and it works pretty good with JavaScript in resize observer. So basically whenever this grid or Flexbox or whatever resizes, then loop over all the children and figure out what row they are on. So what I've done just to prepare for this is I wrote a quick little hook here. Um, for using resize observer and what this will do is every time that the nav resizes it will just log it out and now i got to figure out how do i um how do i how do i like access the children of this nav and and assign them in react in in vanilla javascript i just used like adding a class here let me show you the code for that real quick so, so what we do here is like, we've got this grid of things here. Um, and then, uh, when each of them, when it resizes, um, we run this function called assign rows and that takes all the children of the grid loops over them, um, and checks if the offset left is less than the previous offset left, which means that um, if this one right here is further to the left than the one before it, then obviously it's on a new row, right? But this one is not more to the left than this one, but this one is more to the left than that one. And that's how I'm deciding where does a new row start. So I'm going to try to um, apply that logic in React with hooks or something. I'm not really sure how I'm going to tackle this yet. This might be a bit of a long one. Um, so first thing I want to do is, um, is wrap this thing around. Uh, so I'm going to go into my nav styles here and I think I just need to add flex wrap wrap to this. Oh, there we go. Okay. That, that was easy. And then as it gets smaller, they, they wrap onto the next line. Um, then what I've done is I've written this resize observer. W the way that it works is we create a ref that is set to nothing. Um, and then we observe that ref. Uh, and when that ref changes, I'm just console logging it. So maybe I'll put a little comment here. It says, uh, when the nav changes size, run this callback. Um, and then what we do in our nav here is I say, uh, use resize observer. And that returns right now. It's just returning the ref, which you then assign to the thing that you want to watch, which is our nav, which is the unordered list that we have. Um, and that's as far as I've got so far. I'm just console logging um, the resize observer inside of there. So now what we need to do is to figure out, like we need to figure out, like how do we loop over the items inside of this hook? And then how do we surface that? Um, to the parent, like how do we surface that to my component? So let's, let's figure that out right now. So, um, we can access the entry by doing that. And inside the entry is a target. So say entry dot target dot children. Let's console log that. Uh, okay. So we're getting all the LIs here. Now we can loop over each one of them. So we'll say first, let's just cover our butts and say, if 
there's no entry target or there's no that children then we'll just return there's nothing to nothing to do here okay then um let's console log we'll call them items console log items I'll say items dot for each um, item and we'll grab that logic from here so we'll say if the item previous element sibling if there's no previous sibling because obviously if it's, it's the first one or the offset is less than the last one then we're on a new row so I'll say if We'll change that L to item. Use console log. New row started at, and then can we just say like item text content just to see what we're working with here. So refresh the sucker, clear it out. Um, items out for each is not a function. not um entry dot target entry dot target children it's probably something to do with the fact that it's not doesn't have a length so let's we're supposed to console log the items anyway undefined layout.js no that's not what we want let's get rid of that console log okay oh so much garbage in the console from react goodness gracious you can filter it kind of um, component I can only Firefox added the ability to filter your console but it only allows you to filter one thing in Chrome you can do multiples uh, maybe I should log a bug like that. Okay, so uh, we are logging the collection. There's no for each on a collection. Really? I thought there was. I thought there was just like no map. Uh, let's do array from. Let's see if that works. new row started at free and premium courses okay so now we know now if, if we make it smaller let's make it there we go so now it should say if i make it a little bit bigger boop. Uh, new row started at free and premium course that's the first one and new row started at tips that's the second one okay good so now we know where the new rows are starting now I have no clue how I'm going to do this. Um, I just need to figure out how do I surface where the new row starts and surface that data. Um, yeah. How do I like I, each one of these list items needs to have a row associated with it. Row one, row two, maybe row three. Um, and then I need to return that from this hook. And then when I loop over, it's almost like I need multiple refs. I'm going to pause it here and think about this for a little bit, do a little bit of research and I'll come back to you. Okay. I'm back. I I just recorded a, a video detailing my problem and explaining it how I want to happen. And I just was like, I was writing a tweet about how, to ask for some help on Twitter, like to see what people thought. And that's like, this is called rubber duck debugging because like I took the time to like distill it down and I recorded a video and I explained it. And then just as I was about to type the tweet, I thought, oh, what if, what if I, from this hook here, what if I were just to return um, like indexes? So like the first one, like I could return like row one, it has indexes 
uh, zero through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So zero through six is in row one and seven through end is in row two. And then based on these ones, I can just pass the index to that function. Um, and then I would be able to generate what row it's in. So I don't know, maybe that's a good idea. Um, and that way, like I was thinking like, oh, do I have to put refs on every single LI? But I probably can just return some indexes from this hook. So let's um, let's start off. We're going to need some state to hold that data. Um, so we'll say const uh, rows and set rows is equal to use state. Um, and I think it should be an object. That might, we might need to change that. That's fine. Who cares? Um, oh, that, this is, should be capital S on the state here. Okay. Now what we want to do here is when we loop over the items, we need to categorize the index of the item into which row it is in. So um, what we need to do here is uh, we'll make a little variable here called let row is equal to zero. Um, and we will take the index of the item into the for each. Okay. Now I don't change, say as let. So we'll say, uh, row plus plus. And then we'll do, we'll say, Uh, set we'll say rows is equal to an empty object. We'll say rows of index. No, yeah, rows of index is equal to the row. So yeah, we'll do it the opposite way where each item will have an index in the object and then the row will be the actual property value. Um, and then when that is done, we'll set rows the rows. And let's just console dot log rows. Okay, let's see what that where that gets us. Um too many <laughs> renders. <laughs> okay, what do we do that hit a uh, infinite loop? Uh, row plus plus doesn't plus equals one. Is that what you like? Better React. Okay. Um. Oh. It's not inside the actual callback function. Let's see if that fixes it. Okay. Rows is read only. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. That makes sense. Um, we'll call it row data. We just need a variable and then we'll set it. Uh, and we'll set row data. Assignment undeclared variable. All right, didn't break. Okay. Um, okay, now if I resize, it's only ever giving me one, two. Oh, because this should be I, not one. There we go. See, look at this object. Now we have the indexes of the object and which row they fall into. Ah, it's working. Now, if I make it much smaller, it should tell me that the last three items are in row two 
and the first four, five are in row one. It works. Okay. So um, now we have that data in our state. Oh, we need to set rows. Okay. Then we need a function, a get row. And that takes in an index and will return rows index. And then we return this get row function from our hook here. And we'll go back into our nav and take that out of here. And then we'll go into each of our LIs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll just say row is equal to get row. And then now here we need to actually just, if I was looping over something, I could manually pass it. But in here, I need to pass the index. Um, I have this little plugin called text pastry. Um, and I can just say zero to X. And that will pass in the index of each one. So just save. And now if I inspect it, ah, look at this, row two. <laughs> this is awesome. Um, now we can style them a little bit differently where we can say, um, uh, what's the props? I have a little shortcut dot row is equal to two. And, and CSS import that and did that import it from style components? Yes, it did. Uh, let's just say background red. It's, oh, it's not working. Yeah, it's just CSS though. Um, Oh, I think it's not working because this is not its own component. It's just the LI. It's a child selector. So if we refactor this out into its own styled component, uh, we'll say const nav li is equal to style.li. Paste that in there. Get rid of the li selector. Oops. And then we replace all of these it works okay now the big thing is if we resize it ah beautiful 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 so what i will will want to do is i want to style them not red, but like maybe make the font size like 1.2 rem. Or maybe, I don't know. I'll, I'll do a little bit more style. I'm not even sure what I want to do with that. But now I know that the that is totally doable. I didn't have to use refs with any of the children. The only kind of weird thing is that you do have to pass the index of this one. Um, but then again, if I was looping over some data rather than hard coding it like this, then that wouldn't be an issue. So, uh, last thing I want to do is this is not really use resize observer anymore. It's more, um, use row finder. And then let's just go and rename this to use row finder and then we'll rename this to use row finder and then rename the file to be used for row finder. That's it. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, I learned a lot in that one. Uh, make sure you subscribe. I'll keep posting these. If you're enjoying them, let me know what you like. Are they too long, too short, what you'd like to see. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one.